Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss further into the applied project, calculus and baseball, and now look at question two of this applied project series. And I'm not going to recap too much on this, uh, the introduction, which I went over in my last video on question one, so make sure to watch that. But basically, we're going to look at the physics and calculus of baseball. So let's skip to question two. So, uh, question two states, in this problem we calculate the work required for a pitcher to throw a 90 mile per hour fastball by first considering kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy K of an object uh, of mass M and velocity V is given by the formula K is equal to one half times M times uh, velocity squared. Yeah, now this kinetic energy, uh, I haven't gone over it before, but hopefully in the future I'll go over it in more detail. But uh, basically just that's the formula for kinetic energy. Uh, for now, that's as far as we'll go in terms of that. But anyway, so let's say suppose an object of mass M moving in a straight line is acted on by a force F equals to F of S that depends on its position S. So if we have that force, a function of the position, so according to Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, ma, this just equals to, well, m times the derivative of velocity, but that's just what acceleration is, dv over dt. This is in terms of time, and now, again, where a is acceleration, v is the uh, velocity, so a and v denote the acceleration velocity of the object. So, uh, since what we have right here is, uh, this is, the force is a function of the position, it's uh, then, it, by Newton's second law is equal to mass times acceleration, where um, acceleration is the derivative of the velocity in terms of time, so the position is also a function of time as well. Yeah, the position is a function of time, or in other words, the force is a function of time as well. So, let's look at part A first, and we'll do part B afterwards. So part A states, show that work done in moving the object from position S0 uh, to position S1 is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. That is, show that the work, uh, it, that it's, um, yeah, the work done in moving an object. And again, I've done my earlier videos on integrals and works. Make sure to check that out. Basically, work is, can be seen as the force times distance or displacement. And in this case, when we have a function of force, it's just the, the total summation of this force times it by this uh, ds, or the d difference in uh, displacement of the, um, the position. And then we sum it up uh, from S0 to S1, the starting to the final position. And we want to show that the work done is equal to uh, the difference in the kinetic energy. Or in other words, 1 half mv one squared minus uh, one half m v zero squared, where m where v one and uh, v one is just the velocity at the initial position s zero, and v one is the velocity at the final position s one, and these are uh, yeah again the velocities of the object of the positions s zero and s one. So this uh, can be seen as just a delta k or the change in the kinetic energy. Let's write a better k. So that's what we have, and we're also given a hint in my calculus book. It gives us this hint uh, by the chain rule, m dv over dt, uh, because uh, the velocity is a function of the position, and that we're given that the force is a function of position, well, it's just m dv over ds by chain rule, ds over dt, because we want to find the uh, derivative in terms of time, where position is a function of time, so we just do this. And learn more about this in my other videos on chain rule. And I'll put that link in the uh, description below as well, as well as the work uh, video as well. So then, then when we have this, when we apply chain rule, this ds over dt, that's just the velocity v. So what we end up having is, actually, no, not that one. Oh, so yeah, yeah, this is the velocity v. So I made a mistake right here. This is not ds over dt, dv over ds. Yeah, because this position, the rate changes the position, or the derivative of it is just the uh, velocity. And then the, vo the derivative of the velocity is acceleration, etc. So that was just a typo there. So that's what we have, and then part B is how many foot-pounds of work does it take to throw a baseball at a speed of 90 miles per hour. We'll look at that afterwards. So let's look at A. So, 
So we want to show this right here. So work uh, is this formula, and we want to show that it's a difference in the kinetic energy. So we, we could start off by writing work is equal to S0 to S1 of, of the force as a function of, of the position times by ds like that. Now before we go further into this, uh, well again recall by that um, Newton's law, second law, the f the force is equal to, so it's, that's above here, so force is just ma which equals to m dv over dt, so this is ma which equals m dv over dt and now we want to uh, add the, uh, if you want to take the derivative of the velocity, if velocity is also a function of the position, this is going to be m dv over ds and then ds over dt. So basically the chain rule says you take the derivative of the outside function, the position, and the position is a function of time as well. So you take uh, the derivative of it and chain it together. And again, this is a velocity v. So what we end up getting is just equals to m v dv over ds. Uh, I mean dv over ds, like that, just confusing. So now that we have our f of s function, if we plug this inside, what we end up getting is uh, work equals to the integral from s0 to s1, and then we finally have mv dv over ds, and then multiply by ds right there, like that. And as you can see, this ds is cancelled, the only variable we're going to have is v. So what this equals to now is, so at s0, yeah, at s0, that's the same thing as, uh, now we're dealing with the velocity, uh, the velocity variable, so, so we have to look at the velocity uh, at v0, where this one equals to, well, uh, this is at s0, so that, that equals to velocity at s0. And then the v1, this is going to be, well, again, uh, we already wrote this down above. So that's at that velocity. And then this ds cancels, we're just going to be v dv. So the variables has just simply changed. And now we're dealing with the velocity. And now we can just take the integral of that. So the integral of mv, that's just simply, well, uh, mv, so we, we squared, divide by 2, m is just a constant. So leave it out, and now this is going to be integral from S0 to S1. Yeah, and again, uh, velocity is a function of S, so we could just pl plug those inside, or I'll just stick with the V0, V1, just to make it neater. So V0 to V1, this equals to now, uh, this integral, I mean, now we evaluate this, and then we just get, well, uh, 1 half M, and then plug in the V1, that's just V1 squared minus... And then we have a 1 over 2 mv0. Uh, so we subtract that squared. And yeah, so basically the work is right here. Is just, That's just a difference in kinetic energy. So that's just delta k. So we've shown this to be true. So we could uh, circle this, move this around. And, uh, and yeah, so we just show that the work done uh, to move a object from S0 to S1 is just the uh, difference in kinetic energy or delta K like that. So we got the first part right, so that's right here and now let's look at part B. Part B says how many foot pounds of work does it take to throw a baseball at a speed of 90 miles an hour? Again foot pounds that's the uh, well, the foot and pounds are the customary US customary units so we'll use those because of question one, we were dealing with, uh, well, ounces and slugs. It's a mass uh, unit, uh, imperial unit of mass. And this one is a, um, this is a weight in ounces, but it's not the, it's not the default one. For imperial ones, they use, um, they use pounds instead of ounces. Uh, anyways, so let's look at here. So, uh, part B says, how many foot pounds of work does it take, take to throw a baseball at a speed of 90 miles an hour? So, part B we want to know the work so work is equal to one half m and then uh, v1 squared minus one over two v zero squared we could simplify this take the one half m out of there so one half m and now we this is going to be well uh, v1 let's leave that v1 squared minus v zero squared 
Yeah, so that's that formula we have right there. And again, just to uh, read this again, so how many foot-pounds does it take to throw a baseball at that speed? So if you were to draw it out, initially we have, let's say, our S0 is uh, like that. And then, so it's at starting position like that. So what we're going to do is assume that the uh, velocity of V0 is just, well, 0 feet per second. So it's, it's just not moving, and we're dealing with feet and seconds, that's imperial units. So, and then afterwards, right when you throw it, let's just draw the baseball like that. So right when you throw it, at the very instance, this is going, well, 90 miles an hour. So we have, this is at S1. So right after, we don't know, you need to know the difference in position because we already know that the difference in velocities. So that's the useful thing about the kinetic energy. We could find the work done without actually knowing this distance across. Let's erase that. So at this point right here, the velocity, I'll just move this over here. And then at this point right here, the velocity v1, this equals to 90 miles an hour, but we want to solve this in uh, feet per second. And again, recall from my question one, this is 132 feet per second. All right, from q1, like that. Yeah, and here to double check, you can just plug this into Google's uh, calculator. So 90 miles per hour is 132 feet per per second. So anyways, and if you want to go in more detail calculating this out, again, watch my question one uh, video to get that. So basically we want to get the work. So instead of knowing the, the displacement, we don't even need to know that. All we need to know is, well, the change in velocities and also the mass. So also, I'll just write also, so also from Q1, we'll use the mass of the ball. So the mass of the ball, again, let's just scroll all the way up here. So from question one, part B, it was five ounces. And then I calculated out. So uh, the ball, mass of the ball, uh, it was five over five, 112 in slugs. So this is from question one. So five ounces is the same thing as uh, five ounces right here. Five ounces is five over five, 12, uh, slugs but again this is a weight so you would have to solve this uh, w equals m over g and to get this uh, anyways make sure to watch my earlier video on that so anyways so we have 512 slugs and now we could solve for work so work is equal to one half times mass which is 5 over 12 uh, 5 over 5 12 and then this is going to be in, uh, that's units of slugs. Let's write this meter, so we'll just put it like that. And then times it by the change in the velocity. So going from 0 to 132 feet per second. So 132 squared minus 0 squared. That's just 0. So what we end up getting is if you plug this in the calculator. And here I plug in the calculator and you get, uh, so 1 half times 5 over 5, 12 times 132 squared, we get about 85.078. I'll just round it up to just 85. So this is about 85. And now if you look at the units, so the units right here is a slug. So that's a slug here. Now we have velocity squared, which was feet squared per second squared. So again, recall, so to get the units better, recall, so recall that uh, force equals to mass times acceleration, and the uh, unit of force for U.S. imperial uh, units is, well, pounds. So this one is simply pounds, and this equals to the mass is slugs, and acceleration is feet. So we're just using the uh, customary units, so the default ones, feet per second squared. So this is pound is equal to slug times uh, feet per second squared. And now we have slug times feet squared per second squared. So what we end up having is a pound foot or a foot pound. So in other words, we get W is roughly equal to 85. And now the slug 
per, uh, yeah, so then this one and the, um, yeah, this slug feet per second squared is the pound, and we're left with the foot. So we get, we'll write foot pound. Yeah, and that's typically how you would write it in U.S. customary units. Let's write this better, like that. Yeah, final time is write it neater like that, and then circle it. So basically, that is the amount of work it takes to throw a ball, uh, th throw a baseball 132 feet, uh, or, um, yeah, or 90 miles an hour, 132 feet per second. So 85 foot-pounds of force. And basically what this says is this is the equivalent of basically moving a 85-pound object one feet. You know, think about 85 pounds, that's about half a uh, just normal person. If he's 170 pounds, uh, half of that. So if you, to basically, or a, just a tiny kid, if you move them one foot, that's the same amount of uh, work you would need to do to throw the baseball 132 feet per second or 90 miles an hour. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this pretty interesting video on uh, basically throwing a ball in baseball. And also make sure to check out my earlier video, question one. Uh, to learn about the collision of the ball and bat, which is quite amazing as well. Anyways, it's all for today. If you learn, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.